Greetings, parents and families. My name is Brad Anderson. I am the AP World History teacher here at Forest Hill Central High School, and I have the pleasure of having your uh, young uh, Forest Hill Central Rangers in class this fall and this springtime. And so I thought I'd take a moment to tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about the course and some of the things that your um, Rangers can look forward to in AP World History, uh, also known as WAP. So let's begin. Uh, I absolutely I am excited to be back in the hallways this year. It's going to be a great year. We have a, a new stadium out outside. We have uh, a new mascot and we have a new look and hopefully we are in for a great year ahead. Um, this is my logo to the right here. This is our WAP with it or on it AP World History uh, proud logo. The shield, the Spartan shield will be more to your students as the year progresses and you will hear me uh, start off calling them AP uh, World History students and eventually throughout the course of the year through a series of tasks and skill uh, based activities, they will come to earn the status of WAP warriors and uh, really fun process ahead. Just the, the way I like to look at the school year is I like the one way to get the most out of life is to look upon it as an adventure. I see the school year that we are about to embark upon as an adventure. And I think that's a great outlook to take, especially in the times that we live in. Um, I try to pack as much in as we can each hour, each day. And I really try to see this as an adventure. And I tell the students as much that the school year is going to have its ups and downs. We're going to get lost. We're going to circle back. We're going to overcome challenges. There's going to be things that uh, maybe stump us or uh, you know, frustrate us. But ultimately, this school year is a good challenge, and each day we are going to view it as an adventure, and the journey is the fun. Uh, obviously, the one of the end goals is to take the AP World History exam at the end of the year. I talked about that today. I hope every single student enrolls in the AP World History exam and gives it a try. Um, but the expectation is, is that I'm not teaching to a test so much as... Um, we're doing tasks and activities and skill work um, with the journey being the most important part. And of course, our destination uh, will hopefully take care of itself if we've done the right things along the way. A little bit about myself. Um, I was born and raised here in Ranger Country. I'm a proud class of 2000 graduate, started teaching in 2006. I'm a family man. And by the way, this is the same uh, introductory activity that I go through with your sons and daughters uh, on the very first day. So bear with me. Uh, I'm a family man and I'm the wrestling and rugby coach. I'm also the homecoming coordinator. I'm involved with many events inside the school and uh, very proud to be a part of this community. I'm firm, fair, and friendly on a daily basis. The, the students can expect a consistent academic um, atmosphere when they when they enter room 141. My favorite restaurants uh, include Pit Stop and Roadhouse, but actually anything local. I'm a, I'm a sucker for anything in Ranger country. I love all of our, our fine establishments, but uh, those are two uh, favorites that you can find me at or eating uh, on a Friday uh, or a weekend. My favorite historical figure is Teddy Roosevelt. I, I like to talk about Teddy and, and many of his attributes throughout the year. My favorite book is A River Runs Through It. And I like to talk about books and movies and different things with the, with the students to connect with them and, and get them thinking about um, learning beyond just the classroom. My favorite shows are Alone, Survival Show, Yellowstone, can't wait for the next season, and The Office, huge Office fans. And I ask the students throughout the year these silly questions just to, you know, glean things out of them. And uh, if I were an animal, I would be a bull moose. And it would be really funny to hear what uh, your sons and daughters say if they were an animal, what they would be. But enough about me. Let's talk about your sons and daughters. Uh, I talked to them about an ideal uh, ranger profile. And this is one of my favorite paintings. This is of George Washington at Valley Forge. The ranger profile is no matter what our backgrounds are, no matter you know, where, where we're from, and where we're going and what our goals are, um, the faculty here at Forest Hill Central hopes that the Ranger profile uh, will fit each Ranger when they leave here. And we know that we are but a complement to what uh, goes on in the home. But these are the four attributes that we would like to see of all Rangers, no matter their interest. Integrity, uh, doing the right thing when it needs to be done, learning from our mistakes and owning up to things, and being honest, uh, doing our own work and, and trying our best to do the right thing. Grit. Having perseverance over time, we will overcome uh, and we will, we will meet challenges along the way. But can we overcome those challenges in pursuit uh, of our personal uh, goals and our team goals? Empathy, 
being able to walk a mile in another person's shoes, learning different um, cultures through history. And, you know, we cover 10,000 years of history and we're going to learn about many different um, uh, areas of the world. And so one of the things is to help us develop a, a sense of empathy for, for others um, and also self-control. This one's uh, very important, of, of course, at the high school level and having the ability to have self-control, time manage, delay um, some of the more, you know, I don't want to say fun activities, but because we have a lot of fun in our class, but, but knowing that sometimes you got to, I mean, you, you have to put first things first. You need to do things that are per perhaps not as glamorous first in order to enjoy the fruits of it later. later. Um, and also having impulse control um, and being able to discuss and have civil discourse um, without impulsively saying things that uh, might be, you know, might be harmful to others. We want to have that self-control aspect, um, kind of the, uh, the, the, the classic um, marshmallow test, being able to forego immediate gratification for long-term success. I also have a classroom attitude that I like to instill in others. And, and many of my students, this is what they remember most about our class. Uh, when you when we are faced with an obstacle, we improvise, adapt, and overcome. This is a picture of June 6, 1944, uh, Operation Overlord D-Day at Omaha Beach. It's one of the few surviving uh, photographs. And it is meant to be the ultimate in that attitude, that we improvise, we adapt, and overcome. And my students will hear that again and again when we face a challenge. I'm not going to give them the answer all the time. I, I will help guide them. I will help facilitate success. Uh, but I will also challenge them to improvise, adapt, and overcome in these situations. And after this past year, I think we all know that we have um, a great ability and capacity to do that. So I encourage my students in, in tough challenges to do that. And hopefully they carry that into their own uh, lives beyond the classroom. Classroom goals this year to connect, inspire, and break through. I want, I want to inspire each other. It's not just me inspiring the students. It's them inspiring me and inspiring each other. And instead of having breakdowns, we want to have breakthroughs. We're going to learn uh, various AP World History uh, skills. We are going to learn historical analysis. We're going to um, take a look at stimulus-based multiple choice questions, short answer questions, long essay questions, and document-based questions. And we're going to become proficient historical analysts and then improvise, adapt, and overcome, of course. When we're talking about everyday carry, everyday carry or EDC, they're going to need black and red pens. Most, most students have already taken care of this by now. I'm lucky to teach ju mostly juniors, sprinkling of sophomore and seniors, and they usually take care of this pretty quickly. And it's a pretty low budget production in, in my room, but these are items that I know they'll need and I'll use at great lengths. Number two pencils, um, the composition book, black and white are preferable. You're not going to always get a, your hands on a black and white. Loose leaf college ruled notebook, uh, so you can tear away pages. Uh, half inch or one inch binder with personalized cover sheet, the name, our personal image, and then uh, three by five note cards. You can get these at the dollar store. A hundred pack is going to come in handy. We use those very frequently. And then yellow highlighters when we go to highlight um, historical documents. For instance, tomorrow we're going to read the Behistun inscriptions and uh, an ancient Persian text by uh, Darius. And uh, having a yellow highlighter, being able to highlight the important parts of the, the, uh, the historical text is very important and helpful. Activities that uh, your sons and daughters uh, and students can plan on. We have a Monday routine, Monday motivation. We did this today. We talk about the learning goal. We organize the week. We talk about expectations the week ahead. I like to organize my week and ease into the week. Uh, we have historical uh, reading, readings and lectures. We have quizzes, quests, and tests, a very traditional uh, method of assessment and, and making sure we hold students accountable for the uh, information. AP World History essay writing, we do a lot of that. They will become proficient writers. Academic discussions, we will discuss in an academic setting using a format usually called the fishbowl debates where they will take turns and they'll have to wait and, and use evidence in order to prove their, their point of view uh, on a, uh, with a historical prompt. And then we'll do trials, games, and simulations, which are always a lot of fun. You can see one of them here. This is from about 10 years ago when we were doing phalanx training. Obviously, that's going to change a little bit in the current uh, day, but uh, certainly we do a lot of fun activities and we have adapted those to our current uh, you know, circumstances. We do a lot of reenactments and, of course, the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year. If you've had uh, you know, sons, daughters uh, that have been involved in my class before, they've done the Tournament of Champions. is what's one of the most fun things that we do throughout the year and it takes place at the end of the year. Homework. Parents always ask about homework. I have a, a unique philosophy and I, I try to pack as much in. If you ask your sons and daughters, hey, how'd today go? 
they know that I start at the bell and I end at the other bell and we pack as much in as we can. And sometimes they will be cognitively overloaded and that's okay. Um, it's all a part of the process, all a part of a very meaningful uh, journey that I have well planned out. And we, we have peaks and valleys where we'll go hard at the content and then we'll kind of slow it down and, and try to process it and act it out. And, and But uh, ultimately in class is where most of the magic happens, so to speak. Outside of class, I, I it really want students to be active and enjoy their afternoons. Uh, we have enough screen time. Hopefully they're not retreating to uh, uh, screens or screen time. You know, that needs to be limited, uh, in my opinion, humble opinion. I think students need to be outdoors, but but they do need to be doing reading. I will assign a reading usually the Monday or the beginning of the week. Tomorrow it's going to be assigned tomorrow, uh, but it'll be assigned on a Monday. I will give them time in class on a Monday to read. It's a little bit on a Tuesday. But then after that, it's going to be up to them to read. So it's best in 15 to 30 minute chunks. You have one standing daily assignment. And I tell the kids it's to be a kid, run, swim, bike, hike, weight, train, play a sport, school or otherwise. Join a club, NHS, student council, volunteer, join a youth group, hang out with your family, friends and neighbors. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a great idea to review, read and review your notes 15 to 30 minutes at the end of the day. Maybe go over terms and, and make sure you plug that in and, and treat it like a college course. Study at the end of the day. Moving on to our final aspect, the survival guide. I always give this, uh, this is, these are survival guides and I call the standard is the standard. I, I try to uh, emphasize these points. Uh, be on time and show up consistently. To be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. I'm, I want people, students to be punctual and work on being punctual. Use the chain of command. I tell them don't go over my head and I'm not gonna go over theirs. If they have an issue with a grade or something that happened in class or maybe you know they need, they need some help with something, Come to me first. Um, I, I really don't like them to go over my head and I, I don't like surprises. So come to me first. And likewise, if I have an issue or there's something that needs to be rectified, I will go to them first without first going over their head. I see our classroom as a community and I, I treat the uh, students with uh, an incredible amount of respect and trust uh, until they prove otherwise. Um, but but basically we, we, act, we act as a very respectful community. Um, and truth be told, I, I have one rule, do nothing to hinder teaching and learning. And in 16 years, I've never written a detention and I've sent two kids out of class and they, those students, and they would even say so they deserved it at the time. So really try to operate with a great amount of respect and, and, and community. And, um, you know, we move forward and there's very limited distractions throughout the school year um, as long as we use that chain of command. Understand there's a high likelihood students will fail at something an activity, a speech, uh, a project, what have you. But I really see it as a first attempt at learning and then they have a choice. They can either have a breakdown or a breakthrough. And most of my students that I've seen throughout the years, they have a breakthrough. You give them a little bit of guidance, a little bit of encouragement. You plug them into the right uh, solutions and they will amaze you with how they overcome. It's not about what you deserve. It's about what you earn. Uh, students, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, students are going to start off and they're going to have a bit of a struggle. There's going to be a lot. There's going to be some cognitive overload. They're going to be overwhelmed at first for the first few weeks, but that's okay. That's a part of the process and part of learning. And then again, as I said, we slow it down, we break it down, and, and hopefully by the semester, students will be in a groove and feel very comfortable in class. Every day is not sunshine and rainbows. We need to get things done every way. I'm not going to be turning cartwheels every day. And, uh, you know, I, I've kind of got a reputation for doing lots of activities and fun things. But ultimately, there are there, there are whole you know, weeks where we are just grinding away and getting after it in a traditional academic setting. But um, we need to get things done anyway. Make eye contact and reciprocate a kind greeting. I, do, I, I talk about a lot of life skills and how to work with others, uh, apply Admiral McRaven's Lessons of a Navy SEAL. We watched that on the second day. If you're interested, you can look it up on YouTube. Hope for the best, plan for the worst. I always hope for the best. I'm a very positive guy, glasses half full, uh, but I always have a plan, a contingency plan. And then finally, wash your hands, be respectful, and considering we're in a pandemic, I just tell them, listen, we're all in different places here. It's a judgment-free zone. We need to make sure we're all respectful of each other's um, boundaries and wishes. And then when faced with an obstacle, improvise, and adapt, and overcome. It's going to be a great year. Thank you, parents, for tuning in. I appreciate your time and attention, and I look forward to seeing you in person. If you have, uh, if you want to learn about FHC Homecoming, go to fhchomecoming.com. I hope that your son or daughter purchases the shirt, the spirit shirt, for ten dollars in person or twelve dollars online. If you have any questions, you can email me at b.anderson at fhps.net. Have a great year, and I hope to see you in Ranger Country.